Day one's almost in the books here. Been a great start to our trip. 200 plus kilometer route. Plan to be here about 12 days. And we're starting out pretty slow. We did a 1.2 kilometer portage to get in here. Paddled out onto the lake, onto this island site. Beautiful, relaxing start to the trip. Easing into it instead of bang, 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 right off the bat. There are a few portages that we could have done to get to the next lake, but nope, we're just enjoying it. It was a good opportunity to use some of the food in the food barrel as well before some of the mm. portages. Yeah. So we have 80 this baby's heavy. four meals in there for the trip. Three meals per day times two people times 14 days. Obviously, even though we plan to be here 12 days, it, it would be unwise in a wilderness trip to not bring a little extra food. So. so it's a great looking route. We started from here. We had the option of starting in one of these two locations, but with the wind, it's much more advantageous to start here and we'll be carrying up around here and back. That's over 200 kilometers. This is a, a plan B, but yeah, that's our main route. Very excited. Nice island camp. Both have views of the lake from the hammock. Awesome first day. Beautiful morning. Some pelicans just flew by and they're on Pelican Island over there. Good morning. Good morning. Got a pretty good rainstorm last night so we're just gonna have a cold breakfast rather than get a fire going. Got granola with seeds, nuts, dried fruit and we want to put in about 30 kilometers today hopefully if we can get to our target campsite. So. Big day. It's good to just get this done quickly, no fire, Saves easy a lot clean of up. Time and energy in the morning. Yeah. It's nice. On our way. First fish of the trip on within a minute or two of trolling. And probably a small pike. Yep. Exactly what it is. Pike and walleye trip mostly. World class though. In this area. Looney Tunes. There's like ten of them. Yeah. I've never seen that many together. Yeah, they seem to gather at this time of year. Yes. Wow. Bird life has been incredible here on Marshall Lake to start. Loons everywhere. Pelicans, rare for us. Terns, eagles. I had an eagle yesterday and another one this morning right at camp. Right as I came out from under the tarp, an eagle took off right above. So, songbirds on the island. Beautiful. Just finished the first lake of the trip. 10 kilometers across, and now we're onto the Grip River. Heading for the height of land lake called Summit Lake. Montage number one for the day. There's an old trapper's cabin here to mark portage number one. Pretty decrepit. What you call me? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty garbagey in there. Yeah. <laughs> We're going through a patch of wild rice right now, which is up in this area. It's pretty cool. It's a bit of a process to actually harvest and we don't have the time or the means to do it now, but it's really cool to see. Thank you. 
on to Portage 2. The route is not heavily traveled at all. Probably only sees a few parties per year. So the portages are not that easy to find and they need clearing. On to Grip Lake. Didn't fish much of that stretch at all. Not at all actually. It's just too shallow and weedy in and out of the canoe, but nice paddling stretch here. Grip River coming into Grip Lake is so scenic and there's wild rice everywhere. This is all wild rice. It's really cool and it's just a beautiful place. I'm excited to see Grip Lake. So we needed to stop for lunch here on Grip Lake, which is beautiful and it convinced us to stay and spend the night here. It would have been a real push to get to the target campsite. We're going to camp there tomorrow. We'll have two really nice days. Why push when we have 60 pounds of food? Might as well eat some down first at least and ease into the trip about. Garlic bread, veggie chili with cheese already mixed in as you can see. Oh yes. So good. The late lunch. Mm -hmm. Really nice spot here for the night. Share a tree. Love that. Awesome. And blueberries right under our hammocks. Here's a look at the site. Couldn't say no to it. Just a big exposed rock. Blueberries, there's Aaron picking some blueberries for steel cutouts tomorrow morning. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Right decision to stop? Yeah, absolutely. So here's another quick look at the route. Yesterday after a long drive, we just paddled to the middle of Marshall Lake, camped on the island. Today we continued down the Grip River and we're camped on Grip Lake. And I've paddled this section, did a loop coming back on this black dotted line three years ago. That was fantastic. And this new stretch is much less traveled. This Marshall Lake loop is, is also not well traveled, but here even less so. And here's a much broader look at the route. This is our route up here in Northern Ontario, Canada. Toronto down there, Minneapolis, Chicago for reference. Beautiful country up here. Day three, cool, turn misty. Coffees are tasting good. Got steel cut oats cooking on the fire and a pile of blueberries. A little powdered milk. Eight a.m. and we're on our way. Heading for Summit Lake in the Powhatick River, but we've got a bit of distance to cover on the Grip Lake and the Grip River still. Coming up to the first rapid of the day. Three years ago, I couldn't find the portage, so I just elected to wade and then run it. So, see if we can do that again this time. Saving ourselves a portage here. Back. Huh? Can we pull you back? Yeah. You got a little path. I did. 
could use it. Let's go. Finishing up the Grip River, beautiful wetlands, like a fairy tale. Coming into Summit Lake, a really interesting lake. It's a height of land, water body, so it's right at the height of land and it flows both ways. Water out of the south end flows to Lake Nipigon and down to the Great Lakes and the Atlantic Ocean. Water from the north end, which is where we're going, goes up the Powhatick River and down into Hudson Bay in the Arctic Ocean watershed. So that's pretty amazing. Hard to imagine that could be, but sits right on the top of the height of land. Stop for lunch here on Summit Lake, making some bean, black bean burgers. Oh yeah, order up. Look at the size of this caterpillar. Huge. Oh, it's got a big mouth on it. Huh. I wonder what that grows into. Very cool. Back on our way. Huge eagle nest up there in that aspen. Saw one adult and one juvenile. Just got eyes on the first moose of the trip. Got into the trees just as I got eyes on him. We heard something sloshing about 500 meters away. Going in to check it out and see if we if he pops back out. John heard a stick break, but other than that, no sign of him. Pretty hot, but beautiful paddling. All the whole way here has been gorgeous. Tons of wetlands. And we're now starting out on the Powhatuck River. My favorite kind of paddling. Endless wetlands. Beautiful day. Calm. This is amazing. Almost at the end of our day, a couple portages left, and we can't find this next portage, so our guide map guide says that we may be able to run and wait it so we're going to try that water's pretty low so yeah it looks good just enough water for now cross draw cross draw now draw yep yep slow though slow down if you can avoid that rock on the left yep okay cross draw 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 Good job, good job. Sneaky. Just in the water. Looking yeah. back and it, it looks bony. <laughs> it is bony. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, good job. See this curling wave on the left? Yeah. We want to hug that. Just hit the left of that rock. Okay, draw, 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 draw. Good. Nice and slow. Slow us down a little. 
find the line. Looks good. Uh, draw. Yep. Cross draw. So the map guide said something nasty might be around the corner, which necessitates the portage, but should be able to wait it. Let's see. So as soon as we get past the overhanging log, then we need to get to the right because there's a submerged rock there, it looks like. We're gonna give it a try. It looks like there's a pretty good line, so it could be straightforward, or it could be a messy end to our, our nice day. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Okay, get ready to, yep, cross draw, cross draw. Cross draw, cross draw, cross draw. Yep, good. Okay, we're going left, 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 left. Cross draw, cross draw. Now draw, draw, draw. Good job. Oh. <laughs> we were always going to hit a rock at some point, and that wasn't bad at all. Bad. That was good. It got a little trickier toward the end than I expected, but it was a lot of fun. We managed to skip all of our ports today by either running or waiting them, which was pretty sweet. Our last one is a waterfall, though, so we're not going to run or wait that. Luckily, our site's at the bottom of it, so we're just going to pull out here and do our last and first port of the day and make camp. This tree's fallen right on the portage so we'll have a little bit of clearing to do when we come back with uh, the second load. Oh God. Beautiful. Nice. Not a huge appetite tonight. I think we both got too much sun. So a simple dinner of mashed potatoes, cheesy mashed potatoes with green onion. Surprisingly satisfying. Two packages, lots of cheese. Another amazing day. It's been a fantastic trip. And tomorrow we have another solid day to put in. Mm -hmm. Lots of Tex-Mex cheese melted in here. Rest of the green onion before it goes. And tomato, all for breakfast burritos. Permission to board your vessel? Granted. <laughs> Barely fished so far, but this is a prime spot. Now to give this a try. There, there's a bite. <laughs> Surprising not to get instant bites. What is that? Look like a tiny pike. 
Surprisingly, only the smallest of pike bites here, but that's why I haven't fished much so far. It's been very shallow and weedy, and in this mid-August heat, I don't think many quality fish will be found here. Once we get access to deeper water, then we'll probably get into some better fish. Another beautiful start for day four, leaving the waterfall, heading down the Powhatik River, and soon we'll be on the Kapika Tongwa River, a much bigger one. We just reached the Cap River, and we're gonna be traveling down this for the next uh, four or five days. next rapid can be pretty messy so we're just taking the port we could use a chance to stretch our legs anyway a little paddle break it's good for the body not too bad is that my first fall yeah Aaron had a little fall but not too bad after one portage we decided we'd rather wait in Thing about having 15 kilometers until camp with no ports, we can take boots off and rinse our feet. It's very nice. Whoa. Whoa. No way. Scale that fast. I wonder what he's going for. With us right here too. an amazing bear encounter. It was kind of a small guy. John saw him swimming and then we thought we lost him on shore but as we got closer he was up a tree and then he came down and then he hopped up another one. It was awesome. And then he meandered around on shore a bit. Makes up for those two missed moose. Yeah, that was cool. Awesome. I know I've never seen in person a bear climb a tree. I know they can and they're good at it. But really good. <laughs> see, it was pretty sweet.
we're pulling into camp after a long day and the sun's been pretty relentless too so we're a bit beat and ready for some dinner this is one of the only bits of exposed rock uh, along the whole route today so it'll be a nice place to make camp incredible campsite overlooking this vast wetland bordering the Cap River loving it we are thrilled with it some moose have got to walk through On Calzones tonight, top off a great day. <sighs> Amazing campsite, I really love this one. Mm -hmm. Such a wide view. He's right in front of us, so he's looking right at me. Yeah, very curious. Hello. How are you? We're very good, thank you. Having a wonderful trip. Do the mosquitoes bite you? Not much of a talker. Really sweet sight. Perfect aside from the mosquitoes, which were quite bad last night as we were going to bed, and fairly bad this morning, but just amazing. I wish we didn't have to leave. Great view here by the water of the marsh. That's yeah, one of a kind. Day five hair. Day five hair, don't care. Nope. Beautiful morning for paddling. We've lost the bugs, mostly. We're heading down a long stretch with no portages. 30 kilometers, maybe down the Cap River, through Berger Lake, and the weather's supposed to change on us soon. It's gonna to turn to rain. But... We're just coming into Berger Lake. We're gonna take a quick break on this island up ahead. And this is one of many lakes that we're going to see along the Cap River in the next stretch of our trip. We're through Berger Lake now and back on the Cap. Because we're expecting rain today, we pounded out 20 kilometers. So we can make camp early. It's about two o'clock here and we're almost at Stewart Lake. Hopefully find a good site here. Got a great camp here and we're making penne right away before anything rolls in. Nice tomato sauce here with lots of spinach and tomato. This site's got fresh blueberries, which is always a bonus. So I'm gonna collect some for dessert so that we can have after penne. This site's got a couple of makeshift chairs and a table. Yeah, it's a great site and wonderful lunch. Awesome wind blowing in off the lake after last night's buggy site. 
It was yeah. great to just have wind clearing out anything. Very refreshing. After yesterday's heat too. This is awesome. Best date ever. <laughs> this is date, right? Yeah. Just starting to spit now. So we're trying to finish up setting up camp. We got tarps up as soon as we got here. A really cool spot. A little pathway to our camping area back here. Pretty sweet. Here's a little progress update. We've come through here so far. We're now camped at the top end of Stewart Lake. Three years ago, this is the loop I completed. Last fall, I did this stretch and then went up to the Goki River system north. Here, we'll be carrying on and this will be all new. This part has some nice white water and I have some notes on it from last year, so hopefully we can enjoy that. And in day five here, it's been a good day. We decided to call it a bit early and to settle in early as well because the rain's coming down. So we want to stay dry and it's supposed to be dry tomorrow morning. So we're going to get up early and try and get off before the rain starts again. Keep a bit of dry birch bark with us and some dry sticks under the tarp and kept the bigger logs under the table so rain let up just in time for breakfast. It rained quite hard last night, definitely more than we were expecting. But that's good, it might raise the rapids for us, give us a bit more water. Great coffees this morning and spinach and mushroom risotto. Drizzling on and off this morning as we pack up. So tarps are soaking wet. The little stuff sack for it contains a lot of the moisture, but we've started carrying a small dry sack to put a wet tarp in. Just because if the bag's getting hot, it like steams out into your bag. Even if it's not dripping actual drops of water, the steam still gets everything really damp. So it's nice to contain it. There's a nice berry patch in behind our campsite. So this morning after breakfast, we decided to do a little bit of harvesting and have a snack before we take off for the day. And they're all nice and dewy from the rain. Quite the treat. Approaching the first rapid, Rob, Rob Haslam's map says from the first rapid to Tenant Lake there is around 20 kilometers of continuous whitewater. If you are experienced you might get away with only doing port 2 which is 900 meters. This is a must do port and the rest you might be able to run so we're hoping that's the case. So this looks a lot different from when I was here last fall. Evidently the water is significantly lower. Power, power. Yep. 900 meter port and our clothes act like towels for the trees. So we're pretty soaked by the end of this. I cleared this portage last fall and it's amazing how quickly everything starts reaching in for sunlight. Old trapper's cabin here. Oh! Hey. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Check it out on the way back. Yeah. I come back for a second load. It's coming down too. And you can hear the rapids that we're trying to avoid. Massive spruce. 
really huge, one of a kind around here. Yeah. How do you feel? Not bad. You got a mosquito on your cheek? I do. Yeah. Why not? Just soaked. Sopping wet. But yeah. first load is through. We'll go back, clear, we're on our way back. And we'll be done before we know it. Feels like it's got more of a slant than when I saw it last fall. Yeah. It's a good size. Yeah. Not a ton of headroom, but yeah. <laughs> pretty cool. Much better for round two. Portage goes through an old burn. You can still see remnants of it. Through what should be the nastiest part of our day, onto hopefully some runnable rapids. I'm not keeping my noggin dry. <laughs> Coming down now. Oh, kind of cutting here? Yeah, right through the flow. It's clean. There's a rock on the left, a little ahead. You see it? You can see the waves curling off of it. But we're good. And we'll go right through those waves at the bottom. The draw. And then a little bit of power through them. Yeah. And now power. Yep. Yeah, power. Cross draw, cross draw, we're gonna eddy out here. Okay, good. Good. Good job, good job. Good. Good. Okay, there's the rock. Cross draw, yeah. Cross draw. Nope, nope, nope. Cross draw. Yeah, and now draw, draw, draw. Whoa. All right, we're flying down the river. This is the most challenging rapid that we'll face today. Probably C2 technical. Nothing crazy, but lots of maneuvering required, as I recall. Okay, draw, 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 draw. We can go middle now. Looks clean here. Okay, draw, we're gonna get to the left. Good. And there's a rock coming up. Uh, cross draw, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, left, draw. And Cross draw in a sec, hold up. Okay, now cross draw. Okay, straight. Hold up. Draw, draw. No, no, no. Cross draw, switch. Okay, we're going up the left here, so draw, 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 draw. Draw, 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 draw! Good, good. Okay. Now we should be good down the middle, more or less. Standing waves. Draw. Our power, actually. Power, power. Nice. Good job, hot. Now there's a fun plunge here at the bottom. Power, power. Job. That was a blast. This Good whole time. whitewater section has been a lot more fun this year, just knowing the lines and remembering them from less than a year ago. Never redone a whitewater section within like recent memory. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Should be good right here. Yeah, power, power, power. One rapid left, and I portaged it last time. This time I think we're gonna try it. The so last time I took the portage for this one right over there, trying to just keep my day straight forward, but we're gonna try and pick our way down this one. Okay. 
cross ground. Cross ground is a rock there, you see it? Okay, draw. Good. Okay, let's catch this eddy on the left. Draw, draw, draw. Power, power, power. Cross draw, cross draw. Okay, now we want to get left, or no, let's stay right, stay right. Straight ahead. Power, power, power. Good. I think I put it in there. Yeah, I did, that was the end of the court. Sweet, we skipped it. A little rapid left here. That's the bulk of it. So yeah, let's try and stick to the left. Yep, yep, perfect. That was fun. Can we ride again? Finally in the mood for some fishing. We're into almost Tennant Lake now. Where we're hoping to set up camp, but there aren't any known sites there. We can't find anything there, then we have to go into Capico Tongwa Lake, and that's like another 20 kilometers. So, hopefully, we find something on Tenet. We're just coming into Tenet Lake here, and we're hoping to find camp. There's no marked campsites. If we can't find something, then we gotta carry on for another 10k or so, and the day's getting late. Tenet Lake had a burn probably 20 years ago, maybe more. So, Camping opportunities are even more limited here. It's just so marshy on the shores too. Some pretty ominous clouds ahead of us. Uh, some big thunderheads. Hopefully they'll hold off until we make camp. John's just checking out this island site for us. I'm relaxing because I don't have my shoes on. And there he is. What's the verdict? Where'd it go? <laughs> Yay! That means having we're burgers. having burgers tonight. Cool beans. I guess I'll get up. We're thrilled to find camp here. It was looking pretty hopeless on Tenant Lake, but this little island is perfect for the hammocks. Just racing to get tarps up. Looks like some rain is coming across the lake. I think we'll just beat it. Just got my tarp set up here and the rain's starting to pour down, so that's a relief. I'm getting a bit of a chill set in from being drenched the whole day to the bone, so. It uh, feels good just even to have a dry place right now while that rain's coming down. And I'm looking forward to getting in dry clothes and getting into the hammock tonight. Making backcountry burger and fries tonight. Start with some mint tea. Sounds amazing right now. This feels like a good poker stick. Oh yeah, I saved it for that. Perfect. We found some Saskatoon berries here. And they're good to eat. They can be a little bit tart. Uh, but when they're ripe, they're good. And these ones are pretty ripe, so mm -hmm. we're gonna enjoy these as well. Yeah, these are good. Give me a feast tonight. Mmm. Almond chocolate for dessert. Amazing evening. Cap off a great day. So glad it didn't turn into a marathon day. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have asked for a better evening. And it turned the day into one of the best we've had. Yeah, and this is one of the best trips we've had. Mm -hmm. We think maybe the best trip we've had. Yeah. And we're only half done. Could go either way. <laughs>
campsite this has been. Plane just did a really cool flyby. There's a fly-in outpost camp here, which we went past yesterday, and I guess they're dropping someone off there. Probably surprised to see us. Rehydrating Mexican quinoa for breakfast, coffee. What a night that was. Sunset was beautiful, and then the northern lights came out. Nothing crazy, but still beautiful to see them in any capacity. And then an amazing sunrise. It's the sun triple crown. Sunset, northern lights, and sunrise. So. Hat trick. Hat trick, yeah. Mexican quinoa rehydrating. Coffee's here. Awesome, love it. Thanks, son. We split up getting ready, or she packs up while I cook, and then she cleans while I pack up. Keeps things a little faster. Just had a nice encounter with a calf and a cow, moose. It was pretty sweet. We came around the corner and John spotted them. And we were able to kind of drift towards them a bit. It was awesome. Such a thrill to come around the corner and see that dark shape. And 95 times out of 100, it's just a stump or a shadow. And then the time when it's a moose, it's just amazing. It's such a thrill. It never gets old. What a trip so far. Maybe exit to the right. Last Swift and we're into Cap Lake. So, we're about to head into Cap Lake and then this trip becomes new to me. Last fall I went up to the Goki system, got to cross Cap Lake and then head down to Melchett Lake. Two huge ones. Got another eagle up here in the tree. We've seen quite a few this trip, but they're always a treat. For the eyes, not the belly. A treat. Good thing to say. It's not like we we're gonna eat them. Thank you for clarifying. Not like a Kit Kat treat. Finally got a fish on the troll. Trolling has been really unproductive on this trip so far. And it's a tiny bike. Thank you. Another one right after, and it's first walleye of the trip. Small. Thank you. So we're coming toward the end of Cap Lake, and now Cap Lake going to Melshut. There are two channels. We're going to take the south channel. That's what Rob has recommended. So looks like it should be a nice paddle. Not supposed to be any rapids, surprisingly. getting into Melshut Lake right now, which is where we're hoping to set up camp for the night. Ready to hop out? What's that? Ready to hop out? Yeah. We just paddled across Melshut and there are a bunch of islands at the north end. None of them are hospitable, so we came to the one campsite marked on our map here on this beach, but unfortunately it's no good for hammocks. Huge poplars, many of them dead and just waiting to topple over. Massive trees that crush us, and we can only really find one that's suitable for stringing up hammock, hammocks between, so probably gonna have to move on, but we at least need lunch here. 
So we're leaving that spot and we don't have any other campsites marked on our map so we're just going to have to improvise something, hopefully find something before long. It's a huge lake to be searching for a site. This might be our final option on Melchette so we're going to take a look and hope that we can find somewhere. We're pretty beat for the day. So we got this little beach site to work for us with a little maneuvering we got both hammocks in and we looked all around the lake and didn't see a soul so as far as we can tell we're the only ones on this huge remote lake side by side in the hammock it's not bad at all Big one. Northern Lights again tonight. First time we've ever seen an overhead display together. Yeah. Beautiful. We're coming towards solar maximum. It's an 11 year cycle. It's been quite uneventful in recent years, but this year seems to be ramping up. Dormant. More Northern Lights. What's that? Dormant in recent years. Dormant. Sleeping giant awakes. Mm -hmm. Remember what you said to me on our second date when I saw a shooting star? What? You said, make a wish, but it has to be about me. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Oh. Game true. Leaving camp behind on day eight, after paddling through these massive lakes, we've now got some small to medium lakes, should be beautiful. And after a couple of pretty gray and drizzly days, hoping the sun's gonna break through today. So we're through Melchett Lake and back on the Cap River, and it forks here. To the south, there's a portage of 380 meters. To the north, rapids with little information other than a couple of canoeists did it uh, last summer and they said that there were a couple of big sets. That's all that Rob's notes say. So we're gonna give it a try, try and pick our way down. Let's uh, power stroke over to the right. Okay. Let's get into that eddy and have a look downstream. Yeah. Looks like it should be an exciting run. Here we go. If we see any eddies, then we'll definitely use them, eh? Can we get to the left a little? Could be a pretty good ledge here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be good, that'll be fun. We're good. But we'll need to power through that. Okay. Uh, no, we're good. Keep going straight, power, power, power now. Power, 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 keep powering. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Okay, Eddie out on the left. No, no, too late, too late. With all this water in the boat, it's too late. Okay, okay. Don't worry, we're okay. We're through the end. We'll be good. Even if we slump, it's okay now. Just try and uh, steer to it. Yep. Paddle. Paddle. We're almost there. Yeah! Right. Oh, <laughs> that was a big one. Okay, let's get out to the, the right here. But paddle softly, because we are so full. <laughs> if we had a rock, we're tipping. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, we'll try and get into the grass here and flip the canoe. Take forever to bail this. Oh, what a thrill. That's as big of a rapid as we can do in an open canoe. Filled up the boat. Thankfully, we got to the end. It's real tippy after it gets some water in it. Yeah, the water just sloshes from side to side and easily tip you when you're this full. Bath them. <laughs> yeah, you want a bath? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cleaned out all those dead mosquitoes. Got rid of that sand from the our sand. last site. <laughs> awesome. Ooh, yeah, that was awesome. Drained my boodle juice. <laughs> There's our coffee for this morning. We had cold granola to not cook on the beach since it gets it's hard to cook without getting sand in your food. It just seems to happen. That meant no coffee, so that got our, our minds pumping again. First real walleye of the trip. Not bad size. Oh, about to get stabbed by that. <laughs> Double header. Yeah. There Here's go. another one. A walleye pool. Yeah. Great walleye pool here. Thank you. Marvelous hooks, great for catch and release. May keep one, but not right now. Got this guy here from shore. Not too much, but his biggest one yet. Send him back. Another okay sized one. It's a good pool. Incredible walleye hole there. One small rapid left. And then we're into Briarcliff Lake. Oh, that was a lot more fun than doing the port. Huge rapid and then an easy C1, class one here at the end. And we're into Briarcliff Lake. Stop for a quick lunch here on Briarcliff. Might even camp here, we'll think about it. So we like this spot pretty well. It's big exposed rock, which has been hard to come by at times, like yesterday for instance. So yeah, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay. We've been meaning to slow it down and have a slow day, but we've just been having too much fun to do so. <laughs> yeah, half day, or we're hunting down a good campsite, but yeah. now I have never traveled this section. I have no idea where good campsites are, so take it while we get it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Dry out a little bit, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Just found something here as I was getting water. I've never seen this before. I'm pretty sure this is a beaver's jaw. Has to be with teeth like that, or it could be a muskrat too. They have big teeth. That's really cool. Ooh, full of little leeches. We're set up here early afternoon after a short day. Uh, we stopped so we could dry some stuff out after a couple damp days and also just so we can get a little extra rest. So we've got our hammock set up and we're going to kick our feet back a bit and just enjoy the nice day. Del Palak for dinner. That rapid was amazing today. Such a thrill. That was a blast. Short day, restful, uneventful, except for that. That was awesome. And great walleye fishing at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, it was needed. I think the rest and just drying out. 
Good for gear and morale. Yep. We're gonna make some tea this evening. We're gonna do cedar and spruce. We've done both individually, but never together. So we're gonna try it out because I felt like cedar and John felt like spruce. For cedar tea, you take the sprigs and actually boil them in the water for about five minutes. And then the spruce steeps. So we're gonna put the cedar in, boil it, and then strain that, and then steep some spruce in it. So we're camped on Briarcliff Lake tonight, somewhere around there. And tomorrow we head south down a series of smaller medium lakes into the biggest lake of the trip, Abemasagi. The Cap River continues off this way to the Little Current River. And sadly, we'll be leaving it tomorrow. It's been an amazing experience on the Cap. Very good morning for coffee. Breakfast! Breakfast burritos. Breakfast burritos. Hearty as can be. It's what the loggers used to eat in the 1800s. Well, more so 1700s, if I'm being precise. Mm. We're getting underway on morning of day nine. We've got about a 10 kilometer paddle and then one of our bigger portages and then that will lead us into a smaller series of lakes. So looking forward to what today brings. We've been lucky with being able to skip a lot of portages up till now. So I guess it's time we go stretch our legs. <laughs> Just about through Briarcliff Lake heading into Nass. fishing through here. Thank you. How's it look? Uh, I think we can get through. We have to go to the left a bit. There's a chunky rock right ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Shortcut. We're into Durer Lake now, and the Cap River continues that way. We're heading this way down to the Terrier Creek system, somewhat regretfully. It's just been an amazing experience on the Cap system, the wildlife, the bear, the moose, northern lights twice, great white water, and just amazing scenery. So it's, it's hard to leave. We want to go that way, we're drawn to it, but on to the next part of the trip. Should be a little bit different, a nice change of pace too. 1.8 kilometer portage ahead. At the end of Durer, looking for our portage. 
And we've split up the four remaining big portages across the last four days, which would be nice. They might be, some of them might be pretty nasty. One in particular is called Hellport. So that should be interesting. And we haven't seen a soul yet on these nine days, except for the float planes. You see the portage? Oh yeah, perfect, there it is. Lovely. Portage uses an old forestry road for a good chunk of it, so it's not too bad. Long, but we're almost there with the first load. We've been out of blueberry territory for a little while, a couple days now, and we finally just come back into another patch on our 1800 meter portage, so we're taking a little nutrition break. Big ones in here. These long portages sure make me pity snails and all who carry their homes on their back. Three, four loads, new with everything attached to it is over 70 pounds and everything we attach to the other packs makes each of those loads 50 pounds plus, so nice to be done. Terrier Creek is shaping up as expected. On the topo map it looked like it had steeper slopes and it is nice and rocky here as expected, so nice change. Beautiful in here. We're in North Skibi and it's one of the most beautiful lakes we've been in so far. There's a lot of exposed rock and conifers. It's been a treat to paddle through. Pretty sweet portage so far. First of all, it's not too long and it's cleared. Also, we found plenty of blueberries, a couple raspberries, and right up there is a big chunk of chaga. So, pretty plentiful port. It's also bunch berries, which I don't really like. Rose hips. Um, rose hips, if you want to make tea, Labrador tea, if you want to make tea, but it's all about the blueberries, really, and raspberries if we can find them. Yeah, and lots of black flies. Yep. Cruising through Skibi Lake and then there's a narrows into Terrier Lake, which is where we plan to set up camp. Really looking forward to this one. So we got our maps from Rob Haslam, local guy. He's responsible for keeping a lot of the canoe routes in Greenstone Region alive. And he cleared those last two ports for us. We're for everyone recently, which was huge. And he told us there are pictographs on this lake, so trying to find them. Nothing? No. See you? Yeah, you? Yeah. It's the highlight of our day. Wish we knew more about them. Who left them there? How long ago? But a lot of these stories are pretty hard to find. We're just pulling into camp and it looks like a beauty rock site with lots of jack vine to hang from. And we haven't eaten except for blueberries and chocolate bars since breakfast, so pretty excited to make some chili. 
came around to the other side of this campsite, which is incredible. Big open point, jack pine, moss, and blueberries. We're gonna take a quick dip, rinse off before dinner. Okay. Oh yeah. After a hot portage day. Yep. I'm clean. I'm gonna stay for a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna rinse my hair. going. We brought these electrolyte tabs to put in water and they've been amazing for hot days. It's 548 and we skipped lunch thinking we could get to camp in good time and and just make a meal mid mid afternoon but it's a dangerous game. It is. <laughs> it usually ends up taking longer than expected so we got chili on it's gonna be great. What a spot. I'm cleaning it up after dinner. Aaron's getting blueberries for tomorrow morning. Amazing. Sun's going down on day nine, another amazing one. For different reasons, every day has brought something different, but today was the pictographs, and now this site, which we agree is the best one of the trip. So that's saying something, we've had some amazing campsites so far, and the Terrier Creek system here has been beautiful. Nice change of pace versus the cap. And tomorrow we head into the biggest lake of the trip, Abimasagi, and getting closer toward the end. Woke up at sunrise to try and beat the rain. And we got a fire going and coffee on, oats. But the rain has begun. An absolutely incredible night again. Third time seeing northern lights on this trip. And the sunrise this morning was probably the best of the trip. So this trip continues to amaze. So I've mentioned that toward the end of this trip we have the hell port. Rob Haslam describes it as 750 meters of loon often up to your nipples. Last time I did it, I said it would be the only time I would ever do it. Take this creek down out of Abasamagi Lake, our next lake, and then you connect with this forestry road here, and then this stretch into the next lake is 750 meters of muddy soup. Steel cut oats this morning, cinnamon's in there, and a mountain of blueberries. In fact, we better save a bunch of these. That's too many, if there is such a thing. This is Erin's favorite meal. Ever. Steel cut oats. She could basically live off of it. 
eat them every morning it's if really, I can. Really, really bizarre. Mmm, powdered peanut butter. Okay, packing up, leaving this incredible sight behind. On to Abamasagi. On our way for day 10, amazing campsite, and we should have a phenomenal tailwind today across this huge lake, 25 kilometers to cover on Abamasagi, which would be much appreciated. A headwind on this lake would be really a pain. on the lookout for our next portage. It's about a kilometer long. It's not well defined or marked so we kind of have to scour the shoreline to find it. This is probably it. Yeah. Just makes sense. Gets you closest. I'm gonna take some hunting. We're still trying to find this trail in this old clear cut and it's a bit of a needle in a haystack situation. So we're just kind of muddling our way through. Luckily there's great blueberries again and the black flies are out in force. We found a bit, bit of a vantage point to try and get up above and take a look, but still no luck, nothing that really resembles a trail. Hoping to see a flag or something, but nope. Nothing but berries. Just fold those through it, I guess. Berries and bugs. Yeah, I think that's our best bet. So no luck finding anything. We're back to the canoe. Hope that we can pick up a trail from shore. Otherwise, I think we just have to bulldoze through, which isn't ideal, especially with the canoe, but it is what it is. So we've made our decision. Uh, we're gonna take this, which is a, seems at the moment like the path of least resistance, no clear trail, but it's the best we can do and we just wanna start making some progress. So we're packing up and heading toward a forestry road, hopefully before too long. Interesting country. Raspberries, this road's growing in with them it looks like. This isn't our main road, thankfully. Oh. Hey! Oh. Could be bears anywhere in here. Keep trying some gambles to make this portage work and they haven't paid off yet. Aside from this, this is a morale boost. So we've got the first load across to the forestry road we need to use. And it took us 950 meters, attracted on GPS. It's supposed to be 350 to that road. And it, parts of it were very ugly. This is, this is the very nice part here. Blueberries for morale lifting. And we're gonna get there. I'm just gonna make camp sweet tonight. Aaron twisted her knee too to add to the misery, but there's really no choice but to continue. She's able to, she's a trooper. Unless we call in a helicopter, there's no other option. That's an option? <laughs> so. Just when we thought we had this per picture perfect trip, always some adversity. It's part of it. I can't even see where I'm going. Let's flip it up. 
Okay. All right. Back to the Raspberry Road, and then we can get to the main road. Brutal. Portage is far from over, but hopefully that was the worst part of it. One more portage after that. It's the hardest spot, so, 200 meters on the trip for sure. Yeah, that was the toughest part of the trip yet. On to the rest. I'll take a rest. <laughs> it's the job that's never started that takes longest to finish, as my old gaffer used to say. Bushwhacking down from the road to this pond which Rob said we'd have to do, there's no trail. Giant spruce here. Thankfully, mercifully, it's quite a doable bushwhack. I'm back for the second load, and it's funny to think that we plan on going out for a nice dinner when we get back. A couple days from now, we've been sitting at that dinner table ordering nice food and drink to go from here to there. It's just so funny. How you doing? Time. Great. <laughs> Been better. Yeah. No, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, happy to be through that, but it was not a pleasant experience. Nope. Not at all. Uh, feeling good De being on the other side. Definitely the toughest part of the trip, hands down. Yeah. Okay, on to this little pond. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, uh. Pretty cool little pond. Okay, looking for our portage. We are virtually certain we're gonna have to clear it. I think Rob said it hasn't been cleared in eight years or something, or used in eight years, to his knowledge. But it's short, 280 meters, I think. So it's gonna be doable. Gonna take a bit of work, but yeah. this is this is doable. Working our way through. Two of us should be able to clear this in about an hour. With these little saws, mostly alder. Okay. Okay. Should be in good shape to walk through. And then we are on a big lake with a tailwind. Load number two, and we're so close to the end. Busted through onto Abba Masagi, and it's such a good feeling. Can't wait to make camp. But first, we've got 25 kilometers to cover on this lake between today and tomorrow. We've got a great tailwind today. There's a huge arm of this lake, which is almost like a river, and we at least want to clear that. Some nice blueberry wine I've been fermenting all morning. There's not much. That was really anticlimactic. It was. <laughs> but it's wet in there. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you. Thank you. We've just gotten into the main part of the lake for tonight. We're making all right progress, but we're pretty ready to set up camp. Hoping to find somewhere soon. Drizzly. Finally found somewhere to make camp. Nice little beach for probably our final night. And we both have quite a chill from the drizzle and cool temperatures. So we're gonna get a good bonfire going, some hot tea and good hearty meal. We're feeling human again with this fire and a hot drink, but Erin's knee is not great and she was fighting through the pain all day. We really had no choice in that location, but my concern now is the 1.5 kilometer hell port and the subsequent 2.2 kilometer portage back to the car. But I remembered that Hellport uses a forestry road for part of it going north, and then I realized something. I'll show you on the map. 
we could just take that same forestry road here back to the main access road and walk there. So that's a 10 kilometer walk, but we could do that with no load, get the car and drive it back here, avoid Hellport, avoid this 2.2 kilometer portage at the end. So we're thinking about that, but we have no idea the condition of this forestry road and whether we could get the car back there. It really depends on that. I wanted something kind of indulgent today. So we've got a huge batch of hash browns, garlic, and onion. Mmm. <laughs> it's it. Pretty cool spot for our final night. Hanging beneath this huge cedar, small beach that sees very little use it seems. Aaron rigged up this pole <laughs> to stake out her tarp and have a nice wide open view. We'll dismantle this tomorrow. But beautiful final campsite here. A grueling day and suddenly we're almost at the end of the trip. Hard to believe it wrapped up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But it was a truly phenomenal trip. Our best trip together ever. Yeah. An amazing experience. Incredible northern scenery. Cheers. Here's a toast. Saved All a little right. scotch. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, it's been a good trip. Yeah, endless lakes and rivers up here and some good white water. Mm -hmm. We had some fun runs. It was mostly pretty fun and reasonably tame except for our that final one. The last one. That was that was a rush. Yeah. It was one of the biggest sets I've ever run for sure. And then there was the wildlife. We saw pelicans right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Loons everywhere. So many loons on this trip. Also eagles. Yeah, lots of ducks. Lots of ducks. But I think most special, the cow and calf was, was wonderful. Yeah, and, and the bear was pretty fun. He was yeah. charming. Climbed up a tree and he was, he was curious about yeah. us. And I love seeing that curiosity in animals. Had some good walleye holes. We didn't fish much at all but we had uh, the odd good spot and that was fun, but mm -hmm. food was great on this trip. Uh, we had all those fresh berries mm -hmm. to supplement things and brought some fresh produce in with us, but it was a great meal plan. But yeah, the blueberries had to be the highlight. Yeah, food-wise. Food -wise. Yeah. Yeah, we saw wild rice. We would have, it would be nice to It'd do be... that, but it's a lot of work to process it. So. Yeah, it'd be fun to harvest at some point, but it is a lot of work that almost have to be the purpose of the trip, I think. Yeah, but it's. Was... Cool to see. Super cool to see and see the fields Huge and fields of it. Yeah, lakes yeah. full. <laughs> the campsites were terrific. Uh, I think the top three. The waterfall was cool. Yeah. I don't. I'm not a big waterfall campsite person, but it was still. It's just a beautiful spot. There's no denying that. The marsh overlook, where we could see over yeah. that wide marsh, the mosquitoes were terrible there. Yeah. Terrible. I think um, that's been bumped made from hard my top three. Because of the mosquitoes. No, we've just had better ones. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, Terrier, last night, of course. That was yeah. number one. That was the best. Last night. Yeah. Yeah. Last night was stunning. Yeah. That would be my number one. And then Tenant Lake. Okay. I loved. Yep. And here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I love it. Wow. Okay. Terrier Lake also had the pictographs. That was special. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think the highlight of the trip is probably the sunrises, sunsets, stargazing and northern, and northern lights. lights three times on one trip yeah our first time seeing them together and just amazing night skies mm -hmm. huge moon -ish initially as well and yeah that moon was beautiful i forgot about that yeah like a big on grip, yellow moon. grip lake that was beautiful mm -hmm. yeah grip lake was another good campsite so it was yeah we had, so we had a lot <laughs> hard to choose but yeah, it was the skies that were the most special on this trip, but mm -hmm. so many highlights and an amazing route. Except for today, it's, it's really a phenomenal route. And yeah, I definitely absolutely. Definitely recommend it. Today, uh, the route's worth what we had to go through today. Yeah. It was exactly. pretty terrible. It was but. worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was worth it. But we're not out of this thing yet. It's not over. Still got, uh, I don't know, 10 kilometers left tomorrow. And then that's if we can get out on this road. Aaron's knee is mm. not great, so definitely don't want to be taking on the subsequent portages, which could be pretty nasty, so. Yeah, the really, I can walk and it's okay, but the really rough portages, I don't want to risk making it worse. It's been a good bit of pain today, so. Yeah, it'd be needless, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, gonna... hopefully that works out. Let's and we, we have a rel relatively clean exit tomorrow. <laughs> Walk ourselves out of here and go home to the cats. <laughs> no, it's been great. Thanks Amazing for planning trip. it. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, it's the final morning here and it's a bit bittersweet. There's lots to look forward to back home, but it's also been such an amazing trip. It's sad to end. Looking forward to having a little bit of coffee and granola and getting on our way. And most of all, I always look forward to getting home to the cats. I'm sure they didn't miss me as much as I miss them, but some good snuggles will be nice. Look at the damage this morning. Yeah, we're definitely not doing Hellport in the subsequent 2.2 kilometer. Uh, mm. Portage. I texted Rob on the SATCOM and that is not a public road that we want to use. However, I'm not putting Aaron through walking through Hellport and the rest um, with this. So we'll use it for four kilometers and get back out. And the crazy thing is, you didn't hit that. That's it from a twist, it's internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Backup plan went off without a hitch. It was a 10 kilometer paddle across the big lake, which we had to do anyway for the route. And the road got us out of there. It was a long walk out, 10 kilometers. And it was quite laborious, monotonous, but we're, uh, we're out. It would not have been good to, for Erin to have to do the remaining portages on her knee, which is looking pretty bad. So an amazing trip. And I want to thank you, Rob Haslam again for making this experience possible for us. Really, it was a special one. Cheers. Best trip yet. After dinner, we were graced with the presence of a lovely pelican. And that was very exciting. So dorky. Got my wolf juice. Erin didn't want any. She's a square. <laughs> it turns on a dime with me knowing it not in the back. Or in the, yeah. Okay. For reals this time. Three eagles. The eagles are coming. The eagles are coming! <laughs> I don't know what that was. The eagles are coming! Come on! Yeah. The eagles are coming! <laughs> <laughs>